So good evening and welcome to our lovely people webinar. So tonight I have got the lovely Julie Brown who has joined me to talk about the three principles and parenting. <laughs> A huge subject. So <laughs> Um, I haven't actually met Julie in person, but uh, she asked, she put a thing out on Facebook the other day asking people for parenting stories. Um, and yeah, I certainly have a parenting story that at some point um, we'll share. But uh, tonight I would love Julie to introduce herself and tell us a little bit about you, um, maybe a little bit about what difference the three principles has made to your parenting and anything. Let's see where this conversation goes, shall we, for a few minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much. So my name is Julie Brown. Um, obviously, I'm from the northeast in the UK. You can probably tell by my accent. I can see nodding going on there. <laughs> it's just my accent. Um, I have um, two children. I've got a 31-year-old daughter and a 10-year-old daughter. Um, my 10-year-old probably thinks she's older than my 31-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> proper little character and I came across the principles um, via a, a common route I used to teach um, NLP and hypnotherapy yeah. um, and I used to practice NLP and hypnotherapy and we are we're constantly updating our knowledge so I went to do some training with a mentor who introduced me to the nature of thought yeah. and then all of a sudden everything just seemed to just <laughs> we have that moment don't we we have that moment when it's like oh <laughs> yeah we, we have it and and you know I was I was very reluctant actually to initially um go all in with the three principles because in my mind it was a bit of a it's a bit cultish they talked about but then, <laughs> I had all that I'm going to be honest and then I got more and more and got to know people and realized that I was talking a load of rubbish in my head and um I was then introduced to Brooke uh, Wielden Rees, who works for the Spark Initiative. Well, she she's the founder of the she head CEO of the Spark Initiative in America, and they have developed a child a teen resilience program, um, which is a year long program, and they packaged and they were selling that um, and training it. And when I heard about it and I spoke to Brooke, I was like. Yes, this is what the kids need. This is what I'm doing. I need this. She hadn't even, it wasn't even up for sale. And I, I was in, I was buying it. And I think within a matter of weeks, I was in a school with it. And the difference going into schools, working with children who are classed as disengaged um, with the principles is, it's worlds apart going into school without the principles especially working with children who are the most intelligent ingenious kids if they want to get something their own way <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're quite <laughs> clever aren't they <laughs> and then also children who you can really see how much they're in their own heads yeah um, so you know this was a challenge accepted and myself and my my business partner at that time groom um we went into schools and we worked in quite a few schools with with the children and um it's just from seeing children head down and just you know just not wanting to engage to literally coming out with a beaming smile and they don't want the classes to stop it, it just it's yeah that's it it's just amazing magical it really is um and because i work in schools more and more people would contact me to come and work with their parents and come and work with children and work with this so i did more and more private work um and now i now run the light-hearted group on facebook and i hold fortnightly webinars on that which are just free for anybody to join if they want to Hmm. Um, in the lighthearted group and I work with parents and children um, the difference in bringing my daughter up now with the principles versus bringing my elder daughter up yeah worlds apart and my elder daughter will keep saying things like she's just the spoiled one because she gets away with everything <laughs> <laughs> you would have ranted at me if I'd done something like that years ago and you know what yeah I would have done and hmm. sometimes I still do yeah. And I usually laugh at myself and just think there you go again. So that's it. 
that's what I do. And, um, I very much am an advocate for children's mental health. Mm. Um, I, you know, I'm constantly pushing into schools, um, doctor surgeries in different places and connecting with other people who are like-minded around children's mental health because there's so much focus on physical health and what the children are eating and there's programs for everything yet in the schools they're not mainstream mental health lessons mm. so I'm really, you know I want to bring that to a much wider audience and parents parents I love working with parents because they come and initially they are so worried, so concerned about their children. And then when they can say that, actually there's nothing wrong with the child, they're not broken, they don't need fixing. When they can say that for themselves, then it helps the children say that because what they thought was an issue can be, can be validated sometimes with care and concern from a parent. Yeah. And when, sort of like, we take our hands off the steering wheel a little bit, when we don't try to do as much and try to fix, then we can listen to our children's wisdom and they can listen to their own as well. And, and I very much, and you'll probably hear me say this quite a lot, parent from connection, not from behaviour. Mm. And that's my biggest avenue with working with children connection not behavior mm. that that's huge i think across the board that's very much for me what what the message of the principles is isn't it that connection that we have and i've kind of seen that with anybody that you're with if you connect with them from that place and see their see the health in them really you know if you know they're okay and I think sometimes, um, just before we started this webinar, me and you had a little bit of a chat and we were kind of saying, you know, it can sometimes, because children are small and there are children and this, it can be, it can be a place that we can have a bit of a blind spot around and kind of be like, I can't trust everything to be okay with my child. I've got to have my hands on that steering wheel. I've got to be <laughs> in charge. I've got to do this. So, <clears throat> Yeah, sometimes some of the issues look look really, really serious. Yeah. You know, children are, are if you look at the figures for the mental health of children, they are struggling. A lot of the time they're struggling mm. and they're backing off. Um, and a lot of the conventional ways of, of working with children just aren't working. They need, they need to be understood. They need to be listened to, to be heard not listen to to just hug you up and see what you're going to say so i can see my bit next hmm. you know so with the best intentions and the best will in the world um we can often have a blind spot around our children we can know the principles you know we, we can see them working and playing out day in and day out in our lives but not with our children <laughs> <laughs> with our children couldn't possibly be with our children and yet it is so if you've got um, a parent who um, was struggling in any way, you know, what, what would be the sort of thing that you might share because of your understanding of the principles? What, what sorts of things might you share? Um, I, I also I share the principles and I also share a little bit of neurology because I think the two actually go quite well together. Okay. But what I would say today, I went to see a young girl's mum, she's got some concerns with her daughter and I'm not going to say on camera what they were but pretty serious and obviously she was upset and I just first thing I said to her was well she's not broken so she doesn't need fixing mm. and she says but I'm trying and I says, she says I'm trying to fix it I went, you can't fix something that's not broken and that even her words were that just took a weight off her shoulders yeah. now the 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 thing that we're going to work with still there mm. the fact that instead of keep saying are you okay are you okay are you okay do i have to, do i do this do i do that by stepping back by taking the hands off by just loving listening and connecting and creating a safe space the rest always works out. 
So the most valuable for me thing I say to parents is love them unconditionally. Understand that love and kindness is to yourself as well because parents so often will just walk through life picking up various sticks to beat themselves up with for not doing this right and not doing that right and forgetting about this and blah. we can how we can carry the amount of sticks we beat ourselves up with sometimes is, is amazing and just love and kindness to yourself remember that our children do the same thing that we do they get caught up in their thinking just the same as we do mm. and all emotions all feelings all all states are natural and useful because quite often parents get frightened if their children are angry if their children are upset if their children are hurting they feel guilty they feel a wide range of emotions that blinker and just add layers upon layers upon layers over their intuition and and you know it's like it's like looking through eyes that's a bit like this we just you can only see the glimpses you can't see the full picture sometimes so i think that that would probably that's normally what i see mm -hmm. to parents is children don't need think fixing put your sticks down and just be there in love because everything else just has to come in its own time what our children do sometimes if they get angry it makes sense to them with their current state of thinking to be angry at what they're angry at my daughter today she's she's 10 she came home from school and she got into the car and my first words were what's wrong she was, and I was like, what's up? She put her seatbelt on, and I was like, oh, 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 I've got a huffy body, she's not in a good mood yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's up, chick? And then the tears came, and our friend wasn't her friend. And mm -hmm. she just fell out with us. She was our best friend, and just fell out when they've had an argument today. And I was like, oh. I said, but you've got to remember, you know, that just, Grace gets a bit grumpy, and you get a bit grumpy, we all get a bit grumpy sometimes. And, you know, she was, she was most upset Till 10 minutes later when she was in the house and she was chatting about something completely different. And it was okay to be sad that time. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to feel how you feel. It's just the actions that we take on the, on the, um, under the feelings and the behavior. The behavior is something that we can, we can break a chain. It's like we'll have a thought, we'll have a feeling. That feeling will then determine our behaviour, which gives us a result. When we understand our thoughts and feelings, and when children understand their thoughts and feelings, and they do it much quicker than we do, because yeah. we don't have lots of adult thoughts on top, the kids just get it so easily. Mm. They can then look and know that they've got the choice of what behaviour to do sometimes. And sometimes they're gonna make different choices. Sometimes they still make the same choices. <laughs> and that's part of growing. Yeah, I know a huge thing for me was realizing that, you know, I could have thinking, I, I can remember when my daughter, I mean, she's, what is Gemma now, 34? And I can remember when she was born, having thinking about, you know, I, I was so in love with her, she was a tiny new baby, and I was so in love with her, and I was just having this thinking about squeezing her. And the thinking frightened me because I, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, what if I squeeze my baby? I'm a, I'm a bad mum. And I can really identify with that with, you know, sometimes we can have some strange thoughts. You know, we can think, oh, I don't like my child or, you know, why, what have I done? You know, I've had a baby. What on earth have I done or whatever? And for me, one of the hugest things I know when I came across the principles was kind of seeing that we can have all sorts of thinking but it doesn't mean that we're a bad person or a bad parent or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we don't even have to agree with that thinking we don't have to believe that thought we don't. <laughs> we've got something like seventy thousand thoughts a day i don't know anybody that's going to get them all right <laughs> <laughs> and and you know 
don't, as you say, even I, I, actually, I think a new mum having a thought of I've made a mistake, I think that's one of the most <laughs> natural thoughts to have in the world. Yeah. Because you've just got this pure bundle of, oh my goodness, it's here. And, and, and it's a mixture of love and a mixture of fear and a mixture of responsibility and a mixture of you've seen this chair going through 20 years while it's still not even 20 hours old sometimes. And, and we freak ourselves out yeah. quite easily. And, mm. you know, if, if Katie's having an angry day, it's, so she's got some angry thinking. You've got some angry thoughts going on. But those angry thoughts don't know anything about your ability to do something. They're just an angry, it's an angry thought. We can have all ranges of emotions. Mm. We can control our thoughts. If we did, I'm sure we'd... <laughs> I wouldn't have the energy to create the amount of, to control the amount of thoughts I have. Never, never mind. The want. You never want to, I couldn't. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it is amazing since coming across this, how much I've seen is already done for you, but it is interesting, isn't it? As parents, how we can get into that place of thinking, oh yeah, that's done, that's done, that's done. Oh, but my children, this, this area, I've still got to be in control. I've still got to do this. And it's kind of seeing, yeah, parenting's not outside of the principles either. <laughs> I think control is one of the biggest things that as parents we try to do. Mm. I, I, so many of the parents that I see that they can try, and it's always and always innocently and well yeah. intentioned. And I'm still guilty of doing it now, so don't think I'm, none of us are ever immune <laughs> because we all do human really well as well. Mm. So, you know, we can think that we're going to do something and we can i'm losing my train of thought so give me a second and it'll come back to me <laughs> i'm just totally lost my train of thought you you'll have to remind me of, well, it's going to go somewhere else i think what was that what did you just say there um we we're talking about control and how as parents we it's it's very very tempting to try and control and it's one of the biggest things that parents try to do all innocently to try and protect our children yeah. from everything from a speck of dust to the biggest things like the pot which we try and protect we try and control circumstances and we've got no control over any of them we we do a webinar now we before we know the internet could go off at any time yeah <laughs> we can still plan things you know i said i said the parents but you know i'm still i've still booked a holiday i still intend to have a holiday yeah. But I've got no control over when they the, sent me an email a few weeks ago and changed it by three days and changed the date on it. I didn't have any control over that. Mm. I decided if I want to go or not. But, you know, things always happen outside our realm of influence. Yeah. And we're all just doing the best that we can. And when we can see that... We don't have to take things as seriously when we can see that sometimes, just like the Wizard of Oz, the, f the film, the Wizard of Oz, where the house goes in, when the house goes up and everything gets drawn in, when we get caught up in our little whirlwind and we drag everything in with us, but we're in the centre of that. We can't remember that there's actually a normality on the outside of it. <laughs> We're too busy dragging everything in and yet, there's always that normality on the outside. When we let that storm settle, then we can see the full view again. Mm. We just can't go in the middle of it sometimes. And that's the time to be kind to ourselves as well as others. Yeah, I think that one can be a hard one as well as a parent, isn't it? When we feel so responsible and then it's kind of like, and we almost have this weird idea that if we're mean to ourselves, you know, <laughs> you know I didn't do that well enough. I wasn't, and yet seeing, um, I, I know there's a story that I've shared a lot about, you know, when you go on an airplane, they tell you when they're giving the, the talk at the beginning, they kind of tell you that if, if the oxygen, if you need the oxygen and the oxygen mask comes down, if you've got a child with you, however tempting it is to put their mask on first, put yours on, otherwise you're not going to be any help to your child. And it's the same thing, isn't it? If you start with being kind and considerate to yourself then you can do a lot more for your child where, and I think it's surprising how much children 
cotton on to what's going on with you even when you think you know I'm hiding this from my child but they they learn from how you treat yourself don't they <laughs> the language is the most liberating and limiting that we've got mm. we can't share the principles effectively with words no never do them justice no matter how much we try children model behavior if you think of a child that's a year old that can't really speak very much apart from maybe just starting to form a few words doesn't really have that other way we're aware of the cognitive understanding of all the language that we're using now yet they communicate and they understand us by our face by our, our gestures by our tone of voice by our breathing by all of our unspoken messages that we're dealing with that we're giving out all of the time how often do, does can a friend walk into a room and you'll go what's wrong yeah. or even, <laughs> even you know you can say you can say someone's face how often can you pick a phone up to a friend and go what's up and you can't say that friend but you know because we're all connected you know that that person was like right, probably spill i'm fine tell us the truth what's going on <laughs> And we do that. Yeah. So you know, ch when children can see that in the principles that, with the principles that, that we're okay with whatever thinking we have mm. without taking it seriously, that we're okay with whatever whatever feeling that we have. Those feelings don't know anything about our abilities to continue doing. When they see us, and you know what, I'm really just. I just need a couple of moments, just a little bit of quiet time, please. When, when they can, when we can say that to them, we are automatically giving them permission to say that same thing back to us mm -hmm. and self-care for themselves as well. It's not a bad thing to say to your child, please, can I just have a couple of minutes, just quiet time? And when you do that from a small age, then, then you're communicating and teaching your child self-love and self and, and understanding for themselves when they want quiet times. Mm -hmm. We've always got messages going. Yep, yep. <laughs> right, I just there's a few people on the call here. Um, and if we love to make this a conversation, I mean, anyone who knows me knows I can keep talking forever, but it's really, really great. So, if anyone has got a question or a comment or anything like that, please feel free to unmute yourself. Um, if you've got your video off, obviously I'm not going to be able to see you waving, but if you put your video on and wave or you unmute yourself and ask a question, please jump in if you want to join in. You don't have to stay silent. This can be a conversation. <laughs> so, then it goes quiet. Yeah. <laughs> what I would do then is I would look at somebody at the screen and pick on somebody. <laughs> I just thought that was hands. <laughs> To me, come and talk to me. <laughs> Don't talk to me. So, yeah, yeah. I it's definitely. interesting, isn't it? Because that straight away, when as soon as we open the conversation up for conversations, nobody wants to speak. And it's <laughs> not that they haven't got anything to say. It's because what, what what always happens is when the first person starts talking, then some it'll spark a question in somebody else or something mm. else or some, and it becomes a nice conversation. And this is what our kids feel like as well sometimes you know without realizing well, but quite often um if i'm if whether we're on holiday or something or if i'm out somewhere kid you look at somebody and but i'll just talk to anybody and i'll just go go and say hello and you go, no. like, oh my god just go and say hello will you <laughs> you're just smiling at you that just go and, say hello. <laughs> and it, it's the same sort of thing it's just that little, little yeah, all right then. Come on, Lou. Well done. What you said about that because we've got um oh, I love listening to you by the way. We've got <laughs> a lady that comes to our anxiety group and do you remember the other week, Deb, and she said Deb was on about doing this challenge. Let's go out and do this challenge where we mm. takes away and we do this, oh my god, and the feeling and oh, it's just such an amazing thing. Let's go and do it. And she said, yeah, that sounds amazing. Oh, yeah, we should so do that. And Deb said, what are you doing this afternoon? And she was like, 
oh well, well <laughs> maybe, but right now, uh, don't know about that <laughs> I mean I was joking when I was like oh no I'm too scared to speak <laughs> but it was just like yes we do do that don't we it's like no yeah yeah I'm okay I'll speak uh, uh, oh uh, another time <laughs> We all do it again. It's just totally human nature. And I've been on many Zoom calls, um, you know, like with, with all of the, what I class as the big names in this field. And uh, oh, people are, like, sorry? Say the big names. But <laughs> like Michael and Dickin and, you know, uh, Elsie. Oh, and and us, <laughs> sorry? That's the same big names we'd say as well. Yeah, the Jamie. <laughs> so yeah, all of those. <laughs> well, with with um, Amy Johnson the other day, I'm going to have Amy speaking for one of my recordings. Um, and I think we just think to ourselves, oh, oh I'm not going to speak. You know, what if what I've got to say just sounds like a little bit like... Yeah. And it's just famous. We can't speak to them. They're famous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, you know, when you actually speak to them, when you're talking, it's hilarious because they're just not being all even bothered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, we, we all feel like that and and that's okay because we can feel like that and still talk because just as I said before it the thinking about it means it doesn't know anything about what we can do we can't do mm. and when we model that behavior when we do that and our children say us doing that that's when they can do it because it's not just about telling them that they can do it but we just do it ourselves mm. you know if, 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 am I I could say to Katie, oh, I've got a web not to do tonight. <gasps> Goodness, I'm really nervous about it. What will I see? And she'll just go, Mummy, never shut up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what my children would say too. <laughs> Where did you get that idea from? <laughs> that was like me this morning. I went to, went to see a client with the other lady that works with us, Julie, as well. Yes. And, Julie's uh, yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I was thinking, oh, I've been so stuck in my thinking. I've got nothing to say. Who am I to go there and talk to her about the principles? What do I know? I'm crap, blah, blah, blah. Hopefully, Jill will do all the talking. I'll just sit there and listen. And, and I did. And I, and I sat there. And the girl that went to see, she wanted to, like, talk and get off her chest some stuff. And again, I saw my thinking kick in. No, no, I want to talk principles here. What's she doing? Who, who dare she be talking and stuff? And, and then it was just, it was so lovely the way it unfolded. And we've only spoke to this girl once and I've no idea if what we said had an impact at all. I've no idea. But the physical difference in her today, mm. we knocked her door and Ju said, is... Well, I better not say no. It's so so here, and she said, "That's me." <laughs> oh, because <laughs> she changed so much, and she—it was just really nice for me as well to just listen. Like I don't talk as much as Deb or you, Julie, but <laughs> I can get talking. I can talk, and it just felt really nice to sit there and listen, and let her have her say, and then from that place, I felt really calm. And I didn't feel like, oh, I've got to say this, I've got to say that, I've, I've got to help her, I've got to do this. And then from that space, some really nice stuff I found was like coming through me and coming out of my gob, <laughs> kind of thing. So yeah. that's why I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> Go on, <Thanks>. Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> How often, okay, but I don't even, even just in, in your normal day to day life, how often? Do you actually feel like someone's giving you their full attention? 100% just listening to you, not in their own head about anything, not waiting for you to be quiet so they can say what they need to say to you, not on their phones half nodding because they're only half listening to your conversation and they're busy doing something else, not planning the tea, not wondering what they're going to do with the kids, not thinking about work the next day. When somebody is just able to hold that space for you with nothing on the agenda, that's a hugely valuable place to be. And it's quite, a, it, it's something that, obviously we have parents and children especially, it's something that parents 
I find quite often don't actually get listened to. Mm -hmm. They might, you know, they, they, as parents, we do, they, how are you? Yeah, we're fine, just driving around the bend, blah, blah, blah. And it's just sort of like surface talk. And quite often that they're not listened to as much. And they don't and, and they don't really push to be listened to because there's not much going on. They just we just get on with our lives. But as you've done with that lady, you opened up that space, you listened to her, and she it, we're never responsible for what another person hears. I'm sure there's been plenty of times that somebody said something to me that they've had one message for me to get. And I've taken something completely different and what I've needed in that time is what I've heard. Mm. I think that that happens to all of us. So we can share, but we'll also, we'll get what we need at the time. I found it very interesting today because I could sort of see or hear my ego saying, just sit and listen. And even that was like, you're not listening because you're, telling yourself just listen <laughs> you know what I mean you, I was aware of even that chat going on and even that was like you're not listening but you're trying to just listen <laughs> I don't know how to explain it but it was just interesting My it is an interesting one, the listening one. And like you say as well, as parents, we sometimes don't, you know, we don't make the time or make that space for someone to listen. And I think it's very easy to be in our heads about our children as well. And we think we know them and we think we know what they're going to say. And we're busy in our heads and we own, you know, we don't actually stop and hear. Totally agree. We can do it. and it's not again it's all innocent we are oh, they going to say something so we'll get it done before they've even said it or we're busy doing something else that they need to be done and sometimes it feels like there's not enough hours in the day just to sit i'm saying that my daughter wrote a rota yes like yesterday the day before um and i was i was gifted with five minutes reading time with mum in the day <laughs> every other day because one day was the day. <laughs> five minutes that's all i was given but there you go I think it's invaluable and, and I think sometimes like when when we talk about the principles and we talk about this around parenting it can sound too simplistic and yet it's it's absolutely amazing when we take that space for ourselves you know if we're in the middle of something and you know whatever we've got parenting issues or we're busy or these kind of things and if it's very difficult sometimes to think that just listening, even having five minutes that quiet time for yourself or listening to your child, it doesn't feel as if it's going to be something that can make that big a difference. And yet it's huge. Oh, I think our Carrie here wants to um, say something. Hello, Carrie. I think we can hear, can you, hear me? you. We can hear you. Yes. Fantastic. I've just managed to work it out. Can you oh. see the cat? We can see you and we can hear you. So be careful what you're saying. <laughs> I know. I just sent a message, but obviously you can see and hear me oh, now. Yeah, sorry, I, I don't know what message. I did right, but anyway. Yeah, it's very, I've just been out, sorry, I've just come in, missed some of it. But um, I'm, I'm enjoying listening to everything. And I'm hoping to get along on Saturday, is that right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I can't make it. Can't make it tomorrow night, Deborah. No worries. <laughs> I've started doing ballroom lessons. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, we're getting off the subject a bit, but uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, you know, please carry on, and I'm uh, listening very interestedly. Cool, that's good. It's good to have you with us. Uh, there was a lady on this now. Is it Jules? Jules. Yeah. Yeah, this is the lady yeah. we're talk we're talking all about parenting. This is Jules, and she's the lady who's um a parenting coach, and she works with um parents and children. So right, she can tell. And she's imparting her wisdom. Yeah, okay. She is indeed. She's imparting her wisdom for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I'll take a step back and let you all carry on. Okay. 
Thank you. All right. Amazing. Yeah, lovely. Okay, lovely to see you and uh, see you too. See you Saturday. Yep. See you soon. Bye. 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 Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> That's the lovely Carrie. <laughs> I've been ballroom dancing. I thought I'm trying to be the dominant one. <laughs> so, so I just I'll just check in to see if anyone else has got a question or anything that they would like to share, anything they would like to ask the lovely Julie, or anything, you know, any comments or anything like that. Anyone would like to share? So we'll wait and see i mean if, if someone you know please feel free to raise your hand but in whatever if, if you've got something that you want to say so um would you mind sharing this very often these webinars are watched by people who are quite new to this understanding and i you know if people ask questions i send them to this so and we've been kind of talking about this understanding and the principles and things like this so if they're quite new to that what is it we're talking about what is it we're pointing them towards we're pointing them towards that when our children are behaving in a way that's concerning when our children aren't being as kind to each other as we want them to be when our children are driving us around the bend cats, it's never without exception ever personal and it can feel very personal at times pointing them to the fact that each and every one of us lives in our own mini universe that we are all having our own minds that we are all creating and that not only do we feel our thinking 24 hours of the day but our children do as well and our children are experiencing every emotion that's natural for them to experience that they don't have cognitive control over their thoughts, none of us do, that we are all human, we've been given this form that we're all joined, that loving each other, that understanding and listening to each other, and not our intuition our connection is a lot stronger when we listen to it than the thoughts that we can have in our head we can all create thought storms and we all do day in and day out and sometimes we see them and sometimes we don't and sometimes we look back and start laughing at how ridiculous we were. <laughs> and more often than not, we will say hindsight is a great thing. Now, if we can have a time, a moment, a second to step back before we react to an emotion, to a thought, we can act as though we've got hindsight because we can see that what we think and feel is going on quite often isn't that nobody's broken that nobody needs fixing that when people think what happens on the outside is impacting on their inside it never works that way it only ever works the other way and i've just noticed that um Leanne's on the call tonight as well and um, something that Leanne said I had a conversation with Leanne um, last week and she needs to be your next guest her wisdom of, of what she's doing with children and, and that's on my page as well please feel free to go and have a look at that sharing love and kindness living from love and kindness parenting from love and kindness having love and kindness as our torch to see us through life we won't go too far wrong hmm. and I, I can waffle for england so you know you've thought you could talk <laughs> yeah. keep going keep going no, I, I i think that is 
as I said, I think one of the things when we come across this understanding is sometimes we can miss it because it is so simple. And, you know, when we've got a, a child and a people are kind of pointing you towards love and understanding, it can feel, as, yeah, I've actually got a problem with my child. You know, I, I, it can't just be love and understanding. And yet it's, there's magic in the things we've described tonight, listening, loving, those things. There's, there's so much more when we do those things, isn't there? As parents, we provide for our children. We want them to be fed, be looked after, to have nice things, to have you know all of the material things in life. And we will work and we will strive and we will do with the best that we can to give them as much as we possibly can materialistically on the outside world. How many people do we know who are pop stars, film stars, etc., etc., who've got all the money in the world to buy all of the things that they want and they're still not happy on the inside? Mm. It's, we can buy things. This, this, you know, it seems trite. It seems just too simple. Children want our love. Children want our time. Children want to be listened to. And some of the parents I see are younger children with anxiety, harming eating problems that you know all things that parents gonna say yes but my child has this hmm. and that seems and, and especially I think when people have been introduced to the principles and, and as you they're at that stage where they get it for themselves but they still haven't quite connected the dots with the children which is so common we I think it was my hardest one to do that and what I've still got I do still got one and when we realise that, again, listening and giving our children our attention, mm -hmm. and we can, and it's easy to say, you know what, my child's got anxiety, my child's got this, my child's doing this, there must need, there must be something wrong, there's got to be something serious because of this. We're forgetting our children have their own wisdom. We're forgetting that our children have got the same innate intelligence that we have got. And it's not about having the big band playing, as Mike and Neil says. It's not about fanfares and whistles. It's about listening to the little voice and letting and teaching. We call it in the spark. We call it our spark. Listening to our spark that lights and shines the way for us. When we allow our head to clear when we share that gift with our children so that their heads can clear no matter what's going on that's when they can come up and be empowered with their resources with co-joined resources with us working together with them with through problems but any child who has um, an anxious, anxious mind any child who is having eating problems any child who is going in the mood of, of problems as long as they have thinking in that current way, that's going to make sense to them. Yeah. When we open a space up for them to have fresh thinking, for them to have a fresh understanding, without telling them anything, it has to come from within. It has to make sense to the child. That's when change happens and that's when change is sustainable. And our, my job is, is a, a child and parents coach is to facilitate that space for that change. Just as I would much sure if it was Lucy that spent, said that before, when she spoke and when she went the next day and saw the person, she looked physically different. Yeah. She created that space and the change was dramatic. Mm. And it can be. And when we are here sharing these little dots around the world, and, and sharing our little messages in a million different ways. It doesn't matter if we don't sound like Mike and Neil. It doesn't matter if we don't sound like Ailsa Spittle. It doesn't matter if I'm not Jamie Smart or, or Jackie Ford or a million other people. People will hear from this conversation what they need to hear if they need to hear it. And that's why no matter who we are, we can share We've all got something to share. 
And I've had a lot of people saying, how do I teach this to my children? Mm. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> <laughs> We show them by example, we, by being, by loving. And when little things happen, by then having little teaching points. But as soon as we have an agenda, we've lost, we've lost it. As soon as we have an agenda and teach something, we've lost it. Mm. By talking, by communicating, by parenting from connection, by seeing the message behind our children's behavior and not our children's behavior we enrich and we help them enrich their lives and we help them be grounded in their own resilience in their own self-belief because if we try and fix everything when is that giving a child an opportunity to believe in themselves and to help themselves our jobs to guide, our jobs to care, our jobs to to, to love and and help bring out and, and support our children's insights, our children's strengths. And when we can do that, then our children can believe in themselves and their own their own spark to look after them if we try too hard to, to love them and try too hard to do everything for them innocently we're taking that gift away instead of actually empowering it and having it front and forward and if i just i've just waffled again i'm really sorry it, it's beautiful it's beautiful um. <laughs> And it's, and it's so true and I and the biggest thing that's coming to me when I'm hearing you talk is this like when we do that when we try too hard to do things to you know for our children and, and fix them and these it's kind of us saying I don't believe that you've got this innate wisdom by accident you know innocently and so I think it's really important that we see that for ourselves in ourselves and then see it in our children too and kind of see no matter what they're doing they've got that too and it's okay you can trust <laughs> and it can feel really hard to do that mm. when it looks as though our children are putting themselves in danger mm. or in harm's way and sometimes it does look like that and the only thing i can say to that is actually putting more pressure on that pressure cooker is not going to release any of the steam. Mm. Turning up the heat anymore is not going to help. We have also have to look at that. That's, that's interesting and useful to look at sometimes, in fact, is, is the problem ours or is it our child's? <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting question. <laughs> yeah. yeah, how often do we get upset over something that we think our children should be upset over? And, and we can recreate it much bigger and then drag them into our whirlwinds. Mm. And it, it's all innocent. Yeah. We can have a look with a bit of humour in ourselves. I remember I wrote a stinking email to a school one day. <laughs> I'm going to back to that one. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit more tactful now um, because of some things that had went on and and they'd emailed me and I'd sent them back so I it was quite a, it was a polite but very stinky email if I'm being honest. And I emailed it and then I just walked over at the shops and I started laughing. Because I thought to myself, my goodness me, how frustrated did I get myself there? Mm. And you know, when we can when we can laugh at ourselves and say that that's what we've done, you know, and I've done it now, I've sent it and <laughs> 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 if we've got to apologise for something, I'll apologise. If I don't, I think I will. I won't do it again. But when we can say and actually not take ourselves as seriously, then our kids can say that they don't need to take themselves as seriously. Add that to love and kindness, spread kindness, which is what Leanne's doing very much so. And I'm bringing back right into it because Leanne's project's brilliant. You need her on the next recording. <laughs> <laughs> I think we might need to have a conversation, Leanne. <laughs> 
Yeah, it, you know, even I could look and just think, you know what, I'm not Leanne because I know how Leanne shares and she shares it wonderfully. But we can only ever, we can only ever share from where we are, what we have, and our thinking in the moment. Mm -hmm. And as parents, our thinking in the moment goes up been down like the biggest roller coaster we have as human beings i think <laughs> do you know what as human beings i think we've got our roller coaster i think we go to a parent i think we hit hit new doors i think you know we go from it just being a roller coaster to it being a death drop sort of thing just like you know a vertical drop it could just feel like that sometimes and then it could feel like we're climbing flipping Mount Everest when we're coming back up sometimes <laughs> and just being kind to ourselves on that journey mm. and, yeah. and we don't need to fix our children we just need to love them and listen to them and allow them as best they can to tell us what they need at the time depending on what it is <laughs> depending on the actual if anybody else has got any questions or anything i was just gonna say yeah agree or disagree with me feel free to share i don't mind <laughs> hello mom lovely to see you <laughs> yeah. so if anyone has got any comments or questions anything they would like to add or anything please oh I have a question. It's Karina here. Hi. Hi, Karina. Um, I'd love to hear how you speak um, to a child who's suffering at school with mocking and bullying, where it really does seem like to them that the outside is, is, is affecting their enjoyment of life. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Um, the first thing I do when I go and see children is I sit on the floor with them. <laughs> <laughs> straight in, you know, perfect, a perfect straight as I also have this plump myself on the floor to let's have a chat. And, you know, I'll get the child to um, tell me what's going on, you know, to see how things are going. And then I'll just ask them if that's like that all the time. And I will share little bits of stories about like, like the story of my daughter today who came in from school upset. And then about 10 minutes later, she wasn't upset yet. What she was upset over earlier on had still happened. So just, I just give her permission to be upset when she was upset and then not be upset when she's not. So, and, and also when you, you, children are really, really good at looking at things from in, internal and external perception. So if you sit them down and you say, you know, so that can feel really, really bad. Has there ever been a time when they've said that, but you haven't feel bad? And then, oh yeah, well, this happened. And when you can show them that it's, it's, the other person's problem. Do they do that to other people as well? It's not just you. Take the personal out of it a lot. Then that tends to make a big difference. And, it, and kids are pretty good like that when they understand. I tend to talk a bit, bit about the juicer and how our thoughts create our feelings and that their, other people's thoughts create their feelings as well. So that sometimes if somebody feels like they're being a little bit mean, then maybe they've got a lot going on and maybe you could be kind to that person and just even if you don't speak to them very much if you can still think kind thoughts and when a person looks at things a child looks in a different way with school things tend to change really quickly anyway if that makes any sense whatsoever yeah yeah that's cool so that, that's how I tend to work with children that way is, is basically I'll give them things to build up their resilience, how they are doing well, what they do, because every, every child can do something really well. They've all got their own unique, unique ways of being and every child's not going to get on with every child. And some children have got a lot of things going on there. They feel like they have to take it out on other people at school sometimes. And... Again, if we look behind that behaviour and the person that I'm talking to, if we look behind that behaviour and look at the message, what's the message that that child is trying to say? Because quite often it's not the behaviour's message, it's the message behind. That's completely different. Um, building love, compassion and... And if things get, you know, really nasty, then obviously you have to take things into school and, and you've done that's not to say you don't take steps if you need to do that but it, it would, that's what i would do with a child that that's not the child's coming in is a little bit upset but it's not a big huge thing if it was something that was you know ongoing at the school 
then I would ask to the school and say, look, is there, is there an issue going on with this other child? While I wouldn't tell my child that, but I would still go and you know talk to my child and be kind and just talk about it that way. Because I don't think, I don't think agreeing with a child that someone's not being very nice, you can say, you know what, maybe what they said wasn't very nice, it wasn't a very kind thing to do. And we're not always very kind. We can all be a little bit mean sometimes, we can all be a bit grumpy sometimes, we can all be, say things we don't mean at times. Pretty sure every single child in the world has said something to their mum and dads at times that hasn't been the nicest, that they haven't meant, that they just said in temper. And again, just by normalising that and just by saying, you know, we're all human. We all do good things, we all do bad things. None of them have ever really meant with an, any intention other than trying to make somebody feel better in the moment, even if we don't know what that is. Children are often incredibly receptive to, you know, like you say, they haven't got all the stuff <laughs> and point them to their wisdom and they're very quickly like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're very ready to, to see in a different, you know, see something from a different angle, see a different perspective. They seem, you know. And all of us are only trying to ever to feel better and I think children, you know, they, they're so much closer to that than we seem to be, it appears. Um, they're good to go there. As parents, if our child's hurt, feelings are hurt and they come in upset, then we are ready to kill. <laughs> the protective lion comes out, doesn't it? So, you know, some, again, that's a good time to see whether it's actually our, our issue or the child's if it's ongoing because sometimes we can be really really angry and really like nobody's going to upset my my daughter like that they've got no right to do that and you know i can get myself quite upset about that sometimes i have done in the past i'm not going to say i haven't because i have and then you know i'm still upset about it and next thing i know they're they're about playing in the street together and i'm still upset about it and it's just like really <laughs> but that's life that's what children do yeah. And, you know, if, it, if there's a serious bullying issue, then yes, it needs to be addressed at school. If it's just children being upset because they've had a fallout with their friends, that always passes. And being kind and compassionate and teaching compassion and that the child's emotion might be fine, even they just didn't, they didn't portray it in the best way. Because that's all kids are doing. We all... We all try and get a message across sometimes and get our wires mixed up we do <laughs> we do thank you thank you i hope that was helpful katrina thank you very much um i'm aware of the time we're kind of um that has gone so quickly it's been so lovely chatting to you so lovely hearing <laughs> oh, <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> Come on, stop that. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm happy to waffle. <laughs> I do it all the time. <laughs> and yeah, it's useful waffle, incredibly useful. Yeah, it, it was really, really lovely to talk to you, really lovely to chat to you and hear what you're doing, and that's great. So um, I'll put the, this recording, I always load up the recordings to YouTube, so I'll put a link to your website underneath the recording as well um so if anyone wants to get in touch with you how can if they want to hear more about your what you're up to how can they get in touch with you they can join the light-hearted group on facebook mm -hmm. um i'm 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 in that and there's also a call every fortnight that i do which is anybody can join if they want to okay. um they can email me um just contact me at my website. My website is under progress because I just as I was saying at the beginning of this before we started recording, um, I had a web designer and she did my website and then she just disappeared and I lost my website. Um, the whole lot. <laughs> I'm not a technical person in the slightest. I'm absolutely rubbish at it. That's my you know, when I said we've all got an area that we've got that block in. The, the website thing's mine. I had the Leanne again the other day. Thank you. Um, so I'm doing my own website. So there's, there's something there, but it's not huge. I'm not, you know, constantly on the way because 
most people I see are through referrals and people's friends and you know speak mm. to jewels. So if anybody wants to contact me, probably Facebook. Um, the light heart group is probably the best way to catch me or on the spark group as well if you want to join me um the spark um facebook group that's all about teaching the children um principles and, and living with the principles in our in our home lives families brilliant lovely thank you so if anybody wants to join any of those groups please contact julie um so right what else have we got going on so we have got um tomorrow evening if anyone lives local to us in north devon we've got our physical meetup group in roundswell in barnstable from half past six to half past eight um so if you'd like to join us there it'd be really really great to see you then on monday or on saturday first got a lot going on at the moment we have got um, a workshop at the farm here where we live again if you're close enough to North Devon and you'd like to come, come to Devon for the weekend we've got a workshop at the farm on Saturday all about the principles all about what we've been talking about here tonight so it would be great to see you if anyone is close enough and would like to come to that and then on Monday we've got an online course starting our Warriors Journey online course starts on Monday the 1st of April um, I'm really 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 super excited about that um, so if anyone is interested in finding out more about that please feel free to ask Beck, Lou is there anything else I've forgotten what else am I supposed to say <laughs> um, this is Lovely Beck's point. people <laughs> webinar is the 24th of April with the lovely Chana Studley joining us. Oh yes, Chana Studley next time on our Lovely People webinar. Yeah, so we're having those monthly now. Um, yeah, so our next one, when did you say it was? 24th? <laughs> we'll be all over the place sharing it anyway, so. It's been a delight and pleasure to see everyone tonight. And if there's any other questions, you know, any questions for Julia, I'm sure, or any questions for me, please feel free to, you know, private message, anything like that. Always good to hear from you. Always good to be in this conversation. So thank you all very, very much for tonight. That was really, really lovely. And hopefully we'll speak again soon, Jules. Hopefully. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Good night.